Hello, my name is Dave, and we're going to continue learning about dynamic arrays. And at this point, we know what methods a dynamic array should support. Uh, I should remind you, a dynamic array, our, our canonical example in Java is the ArrayList class, which is a an example of a dynamic array. Um, and the main thing we've learned so far is that we implement a, dy a dynamic array using an array, but when that array is full, we make a larger array, and we copy all the elements into that larger array. Um, and we make sure that that larger array is twice the size of the original array, which leaves us with plenty of extra room so that the next time I add an element, there'll be room to add it, and it will take a long time before I fill it up, and then when I add an element when it's full, I double the size of that array again. And uh, because my array is not necessarily full, it's usually not, we also want to keep track of how many elements are in the array, and that's what's stored in my size field. So then we tried implementing this dynamic array class, and I don't know if you noticed it, but there was a little uh, puzzle. I, I left a little uh, a little challenge for you to figure out, to find the error in this code, and although there may be many errors, there is one that struck me as particularly glaring. I have size with a semicolon, which is clearly not an, an actual line of Java code. I meant to return the size. I'm sure you all caught that. All right, now... I just finished writing this method that resized the array if it's full, that moved everything into an array that was twice as large if it was full, and that's now going to help me write these add methods. So let's start that. Add. Okay, we're running out of room already. Add. And my add method, I believe, took in an object, and I'm supposed to add this object to the end of the list. All right, so. My first concern is, well, what if I don't have room for this object at the end of the list? What if it's full? Well, no problem. We'll call resize if full, and now I know for certain that the array is not full, because I've just resized it, and now it has room for this object if necessary. If, if it, if it, let's see, if there was room, this did nothing. If there was no room, it made a bigger array, and now there's room. So I know there's room for my object now. So let's add that object. Where do I add it? I add it to data of, well, let's see, what is the index? Let's take a look at possibilities here. So in this array, if I were to add a new element, I would want to put them here. Let's see, what index is that? This is index zero, whoop, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, whoop, seven. And uh, that means the next element would go in position five. Something to note. Look, 5 is the size of my my dynamic array. It's the size from the outside. It's the number of actual elements. So it turns out the elements will be in positions 0 through size minus 1, just like they're usually in 0 through length minus 1, but since it's not full, they're in 0 through size minus 1. And the next element would go in uh, the very next position, which if this is size minus 1, this is size. So the next value goes at position size. So let's sure to do that. Put my cursor. There it is. Okay, so data at size is going to be opt. So we'll save that object. And there's one more thing I better remember to do when I add to the end of this dynamic array. And that will maybe be obvious if I do this in my picture, or I hope it will be. If I add another object here, let's suppose I add... Uh, I don't know this bright pink one here, or peach, or I don't know what color that is. If I add that to this position, there's something wrong with this picture. There's still something wrong. And that is, besides that perhaps you find this picture a little sloppy, um, the main thing that's wrong with this picture is size should not be 5 anymore, because now there are 6 elements in my dynamic array, so size had better be 6. Size should reflect the actual number of elements in the dynamic array. So that means every time I add an element, and I've, I've really been counting on this fact, every time I add, add an element, come on cursor, I need to remember to increment size. Well, that's add. That leaves us wondering about all those other lovely methods like add at a particular index and remove from a particular index. Let's try, well, let's try adding at a particular index. Public void add, this time, at a particular index. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to resize it full. If it's full, I need to make sure that I resize so I have room to add this element. Except this time I'm not going to add it. Oh, you know what else is going to be the same? Uh-oh, did I lose my cursor again? No. Oop, there we go. This time, uh, let's see. I do still want to increment the size. I do still want to resize it full. But in the middle, I do not want to store obj at data.size. Right? I don't want to store it there. And I don't want to store it there because I'm supposed to be adding an index. And I can't just put it at index because there's probably something already there. So if index is 2, and I go to add this element at position 2, well, that's a problem. There's already something at position 2. So this brings us to something we might have suspected about the ArrayList class and about dynamic arrays. If I'm adding at position 2, then let's get some color in here. Uh, maybe a color we haven't used too much of. Well, OK, we've used a lot of color. Um, if I'm adding at position 2, then all of these elements need to make room for that element to be at position 2. And they have to stay in their original order because that's what it means to be in a list is my elements are in order. And so if I add to the middle, I need to make sure everything else moves aside. So if I add to position 2, all these elements are going to move. And the easiest way to make all of those elements move is to start shifting down from the right. So move this guy. Let's see if I can draw all of that. Move a little purple. Put in box 6 a reference to the value that was in box 5. Now I can put in box 5 a reference to the value that was in box 4, put in box 4 a reference to the value that was in box 3, and 3 put a reference to the one that was in 2, and now I can put an all new value in box 2, and by doing so I have added a value to the middle and I have made a giant mess of this picture. So that is the plan. Now I feel certain that I'm never going to get my cursor back, so we'll just do this. Maybe we'll even switch colors. Nah, that's too confusing. Okay. So I want to add an element. And I need to shift all the elements down first before I can add that element, so I will have a for loop. And my strong recommendation when writing these loops is to pick an index you're keeping track of. Either you're keeping track of the place you're moving elements into, or the place you're moving them from. And either way you do that is perfectly fine. I'm going to keep track of where I'm moving my elements from. Uh, but either way is fine, as long as I know exactly which way I'm doing it. So where I'm moving from? Well, the f I'll call my index from, so I can remember that. And the first place I move an element, oops, first place I move an element from is the very last position I have an element. And the last position I have an element is always going to be size minus 1. So from starts at size minus 1. And then from is going to decrement. It's going to go down. And it's going to keep going down until from gets down to, well, what's the last position I move from? The last one I move from is index. Because once I've moved an element out of index, I can add my object to it. So from should be greater than or equal to index. When from gets to index, I still need to move that element from index, but having moved it, there's now room. OK, now, notice all the places I can mess this up. So I really want to think very carefully when I write this code, because debugging this would be awful. I really want to be sure. Did I mean size minus 1? Did I mean greater than or equal to? Do I mean decrementing? And uh, with any luck, I actually do. So we'll hope I have this right here. If we don't, we would uh, we discover when we run it we'd have some miserable debugging. So we need to move an element from from into, so it's moving into a position, and the position it's moving into is, let's see, I'm going to make you dizzy again and scroll up, they're all moving to the right. That means they're all moving from a lower index to a higher index, or in other words, from from into from plus one. And now I've shifted everything down, which is excellent because now I have room to add my new element. And my new element goes at position index, which is now empty if that code worked. And of course, I want to remember to increment the size when I'm done. And there, we have adding to the middle of a dynamic array. And I think I will leave removing from the middle of the dynamic array as an exercise for, for you, the viewer, although I might 
someday go and uh, and post that solution too. Uh, but you might want to try that on your own because it's really going to be a very similar experience to adding in the middle. Alright, that's Dynamic Arrays. I will see you in the next video.